Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On the Paint Table. It's right, I'm back uh, after a week and a bit off. Um, I have returned to paint and start new projects and get up on things. We've got so much exciting stuff coming right now. Um, we got Infinity and 4 dropping right now. Carlos has been busy putting out all kinds of cool tutorial videos um, with Tom from... Um, uh, CB as well, and then you've got the the new rules dropping. Of course, uh, some new faction starters coming for Code One. I'm probably going to work on my Winter Four. As far as I'm Winter Four is my first faction. I obviously, I have three new factions for N4. I'm doing all of the Code One factions um, that I painted up. So my O12, uh, my Winter Four, and my White Banner. Um, and Owen's doing some Shazvasian combined army from that as well. Uh, and I'll be adding some models to that. Uh, my next leg of my expansions for my Ultramarines I'm going to start working on too. Uh, some like vehicles, probably another big troop choice, some intercessors and stuff, and then some support characters like some psychers and things. So I got all that ready. I'm going to do the solo play missions for Dracula's America. So I got a posse of four sort of like gnarly survivors to try and have a, what was it, a, a bad night at Red Rock, I think is what the expansion's called. Uh, some more stuff for Warhammer Quest. Hopefully I'll get to record with Chris sometime soon. And then I'll be uh, finishing painting up Bot War. Me and Mike from Epitech Studios are going to be trying out um, this awesome sort of like 80s cartoon themed, uh, all kinds of different cartoons, um, uh, like skirmish sort of sci-fi game, pulp game. I, I don't actually call it a pulp game because it's like just full of tropes and it's really cool. Uh, and I also finished off uh, my last two models from the Indominus starter set, uh, which was um, my Blade Guard Ancient and my Chaplain for my Ultramarines. So... Now that's done, I've like, I, I think I've said this before, I have this thing where if I don't finish something, I get stuck and I never move on. So like those last two models were literally mentally hanging me up from doing my next bunch of Ultramarines. Uh, and now that that is out of the way and finished, I can like, I'm like mentally prepared to go and, and do the next stage. So um, yeah, so let's see what I got done. I got seven models painted this week. Uh, I mean, this week, last night, <laughs> like two, two finished and five painted because I've only been back for a couple days um, and a couple more base coated and I'll show you what's on the way. This is my first two finished models from Ultramarines. I finished off that Blade Guard Ancient um, to go with my Blade Guard unit and he's super simple, just he's mostly robes and then for the gajillion time because I got asked how I did the blue, it's um, cobalt blue from Green Stuff World airbrushed over gloss black primer. Uh, that nice rich gold is scale 75 Viking gold. And the rest is just like a variety of GW colors that you can find in the GW palette. Um, and then, yeah, they're on the Sector Mechanica spaces, which I don't know if they still exist. Here's the Chaplain, good old Privateer Press Coal Black as a base coat um, for his power armor, and then like details as everybody else. So just uh, painting up some of that scale 75 gold. Um, I think I used Iron Blaster, no, Lead Blaster, Iron Blaster, Lead Blaster? I think Iron Blaster actually is the base coat for all the metallics. I just give it some washes um, and uh, with some, I think it's Agrax gloss and Nil Nil gloss and then highlighting everything up. So he's ready to rock and roll. These two models now done. See, Indominus Star, the Ultramarine's half is all completely painted um, and I can move on to other things. And I painted up Movaliance. This is my, um, my first faction. This is about 60 points of uh, Valiance for Bot Wars. Now the Valiants are, uh, they ally with the, like the Earth Forces, um, the democracy. Uh, and this is General Duke, their big leader. He's got some, some pretty cool, like, uh, I guess like blocky kind of like armor and stuff like that. And he's probably the most expensive bot I have. He's 25 points. He's, he's a bad Bama Jamma. Um, and then this is their stack cards. Their stack cards are all very 80s trading card, which I love. I'm just putting them here so I can remember their names. <laughs> There's a variant of this guy too, with like a, I think he's got a sword, a big broadsword, and he's like charging, which is really rad. Um, but I painted him up in just some um, Citadel Contrast paints over Gray Sear Primer. Uh, it's the Ultramarine Blue, some Scale 75 Gold there again for his chest. And then the uh, Space Wolf Gray for all the legs and stuff like that. The base tone is the um, Martian Earth from... Uh, uh, huge minis and then those are the winter tufts from I believe it is um, Oh geez work uh, about work war games something war games something. Oh shoot. I've forgotten it. It's I've lost it <laughs> Battle battlefield battles. I can't remember anyway it's winter tufts <laughs> you'll, you'll, I'll, I'll, The name will come to me eventually uh, this is Aegis. He's like one of the little bots and he's pretty cheap. I think he's only like six points uh, And then you've got this guy. He's like the stealth bot. I love him. He's got his like uh, metal gear like commando goggles and stuff. His name's Wolf. Uh, always done with contrast paints and then some highlights and stuff too to give them that nice vivid color. Um, this is Angel, their crossbow or hand crossbow or whatever. And then finally, there is this little guy right here, which is Top Star with his dually pistols. Run duallys. Um, again, all with uh, appropriate, I think it's Cowder Blue uh, contrast paint and then just highlighting everything up afterwards. Uh, the Martian Earth. 
my, my trick for doing it, because all of the, when you use like a basing gel, which is basically like a heavy texture paint, um, it tends to be pretty monochromatic. What I do is I usually wash it a bit afterwards. So all the recesses are washed with some known, um, or not, no, no, uh, uh, agar or shade, just a flat one. And then I give it a good dry brush with just a sort of like reddy brown or orangey brown. Um, blend it up to a little bit of beige. And they're all done, they're ready to rock and roll. So that's 60 points, I think it's 25, I, I think I can add. 25, uh, 40 plus 20 is 60, yeah, 60 points. Um, it's roughly 80 points for a game, so I, I can add some stuff to this, but this is the starter set faction for the Valiants. And there are like little upgrades and stuff too, little human companions that can follow your bots around or your tanks or whatever uh, to make them tougher, and they're all like assigned by factions. You have like a little engineer, a little, little kid sidekick or whatever, um, and they'll make you guys tougher or stronger or smarter or slightly more tactics or whatever. Uh, but I'm gonna try this out. I think uh, Mike has the Infestors, but what we'll do is for the first couple games, we'll probably paint up the, uh, right, I'm in the um, process of painting up the Atlanticans for Bot War, and we'll uh, throw down with that starter set for a couple games just to get a feel for it, and then he'll he'll play with his Infestors as well. Here's the next step for my Primaris army, my Ultramarines. I'm gonna paint up these Intercessors, so I have a third troop choice, because I can um, then take these guys as like two five-man squads, probably two sergeants, and use them to, Rock and roll some um, some like f base fire support for holding objectives, and my assault intercessors can be the third troop choice. I got an ironclad dread because I love ironclad dreads, and they never really get like they never really get their due. They're pretty cool. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna try them. Out. Tough to say dreadnought, no degrading stat line. Uh, this one was for my red scorpions ages ago, but I got rid of that army, and I just he never got finished. So I think I have another one in a box somewhere I could build. Um, and I'll, I'll paint up a couple of them on these 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 bases just to try out because I've got a solid intercessor, so why not have like a, a you know this dread? I, I I feel like the Redemptor or the regular dread, either one could have a Primaris Marine in it, so I, I don't feel bad using regular dreadnoughts in a Primaris army. I, I feel like the Redemptor is just like a new variation. And then I want to paint my Inquisitor. I have this Solomon Lock. He's the uh, old Order Xenos. He's so dusty. <laughs> I just realized this old Order Xenos Inquisitor from Forge World. Probably the nicest Inquisitor miniature ever sculpted, I think. He's just a, a like I, I have Hector Rex as well, somewhere in a box. Um, but I just love this miniature, and I'm gonna paint him up just to be my like my my little ally Inquisitor, so I can have like a Dispel or a uh, Deny the Witch in my Knight Army and all kinds of like, you know, he's just he he doesn't count as he doesn't break your your um your battle forge or whatever. I got 10 bases here put aside for my Marines. And this, I never painted this for my Space Wolves because I, I ended up painting the Phobos one. So I'm gonna finally paint this guy as an Ultramarine. I'll probably keep that blue because I don't think I'm gonna, ch I'm gonna keep the Librarius blue different from my Ultramarine blue because I feel like it would be different. And then do like the shoulder pad in the Ultramarine. I'll, I'll paint it gloss black and just hand paint on that uh, Cobalt blue. And then just do him up in some Librarius robes for uh, for my, my primary faction and just put him on another deck plating base. And that's it, that's about 1,500 points with some options once I've added in, actually it's more than that, I think. With the two, the standard bearer and the um, the chap one, I'm probably at 1,200 points now painted. Uh, and not including my Space Marine heroes, because I'm not gonna include them all the time in our Primaris. <laughs> Although they might be two wounds, which would be cool. <laughs> um, and then I've got like about 1,500 points of, uh, of Ultramarines painted, and I can start looking at adding some options or whatever, just to make it a nice, tidy, still Mania 2000. And it's up for some um, just finishing touches on my Witcher 4. I'm gonna paint up the Calstrom, uh, Beyond Calstrom stuff. The, uh, was it, uh, the big the big dude, what's he called? The Varg and the Boig Soldier and then the Locust uh, to add to my Winter 4. And then um, after that I'll do the Shang-Chi, the um, Ye Mao and the Jing Cho because they're also cool add-ons for my White Banner. But I'm, I'm more excited about the Pano stuff. And then paint up some new drawn bots too. Probably, I'll probably do one HMG and one just like sniffer bot just to have like the basic one probably the pathfinder with the combat rifle because he's pretty rad these little guys this is gonna be my 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 handsome crew of dudes i got a shotgun a rifle a pistol and then doc over here the sawbones uh who's gonna be my my four survivors it's my left for dead uh for bad night at red rock which i'm pretty excited about running it's the solo um three-part uh dracus america campaign where you have to fight like Cowboy zombies. I, I mean, conveniently, I painted a whole bunch of cowboy zombies just recently, and then have some like bigger bad guys too, because I have all my coven stuff painted. So I just gotta get these guys painted. Because I, I mean, if I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna do a little mini expansion, I should have new heroes. We'll give them all names. You, you got here's how's this? I'm gonna get a close up on all of them. I think the dude with the hat should be the leader. Shotgun should be his best friend. Uh, his like former rival there with the rifle, and then Doc is basically just Wilford Brimley. Um, we're just gonna call him Wilford. I'm gonna name Doc, I'm gonna name him Wilford. You guys tell me in the comments what the names of the other three should be. But it's Wilford and then three others. The leader, the best friend, and the former rival. 
Paint this guy. We got we got uh, Wilhelm the Hat, I guess. <laughs> as opposed to Wilford. This is my witch hunter for um, quest, and I gotta paint him up for my next quest mission with Chris. Whenever he gets a chance to get down here again, so I can keep playing quest. And then the Bot War starter. Um, so this is the two-player starter set for second edition. It comes with uh, resin miniatures, the resin casts. I think from 3D prints. They might they might be hand sculpts too. I'm not sure. Um, and these are the Atlanticans. So you've seen the the half that's the uh, Valiants. But you get two Atlantican fighter guys, or like pilot guys, which are the Moray and Stingray. They both have the air support thing, which means basically when you have like this big keyword right here, that's your like transforming power. So these guys transform to planes and they can like move super far and then ignore line of sight. And I'm painting them up. And then these four, which is actually kind of cool, you get Nebulous, Aegon, Nami, and Thermal, these little guys. Although they're on 40 mils, which is, they're not that little. They're all combiners, and they're four to five of the Atlantican combiner that turns into Leviathan, which is the super heavy. So basically from the starter set, if you just picked up Leviathan and the support pack that has um, their core combiner guy in it, basically the guy who's like, and I'll be the head. <laughs> they, um, they turn into one of the huge guys. So they, I thought it was like, a really cool like feature of the starter set. Um, that you got basically everything you needed to make like the, the big dude from um, from this with like two additional purchases and, I, and that rounds it out to well over um, your 80 points too because I'm pretty sure this is 60 sorry 58 points uh, before you start adding in like the little upgrades and stuff like that so you put roughly 60 points each for your your two star factions and then like a, another additional pack and they come in these nice little sleeves i hadn't seen this as, as miniature packaging before um but they came in these little sleeves uh just in their individual components now i had almost no cleaning required which was really nice there's very very little in the way of like i scraped some old lines but there was super super little to, to do to clean them i just bolted them together with some super glue they went together super fast and they were ready to paint with some contrast paints you can see i have the base cuts done here this is the e and in yellow warpstone green and um black templar on the the weapons for these two for stingray and moray uh, and they are, um, and then sorry, that's transparent. I can't remember what the transparent green is from Citadel color on the the cockpits there, but that's all gonna get dulled down later when I go over it with some um, clear coat. Uh, you get your energy cubes and all your attack dice. It does use uh, sort of like a, a tiered regular, sorry, like um, a tiered special dice system. But you could use D6s too if you want to at home as long as you just like translate the values. Um, the purple dice are attack dice, the energy cubes your action points basically, and the red shield dice are your uh, blocking dice. And everybody has like a shield stat, uh, melee and range stat, and then a, a critical dice system where you add critical dice in for things like charging or whatever to get bonuses. You get tons of dice and tons of energy cubes. And then you get yeah, a cool little bot where I thought this is a cool feature. You get a little, little tape measure. I'm going to use another tape measure. Um, and your rule book and all your rules, which I'll do a flip through um, as a GMG review in a little while. But there's six factions. No, actually, I actually think there's more than six factions. There's like a bunch of like human earth factions. There's the bot factions. Um, and then there's like... Yeah, you can mix and match them on ally matrix too. So there's lots of like possibilities. And it's got a cool easy vibe. So look forward to uh, let's play pretty soon um, with me and Mike, and then uh, yeah, hopefully we'll 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 get into it and play some more games. So you go another on the paint table done and on the books. I hope you enjoyed that look at the last seven models I painted in the last like two days from being back. And I'm stoked to do more things. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to try and do the second half of Warlock Fire Top Mountains. So tune into my channel then, um, and I'll see you next week before I get done. Thanks, now Ash. Have more gaming. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.